That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's time now for Victor Allen's new new sports. That's right, from the fans' view, written, directed, and produced by Victor Allen, the one that the ladies have nicknamed Sexual Chocolate. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, here's the man, he's Vic! Yeah! With the sports! Yeah! Ah! A lot of extra, man. Yeah! That's a lot of extra. Ooh, Get excited. Sports. Sports will do that. Somebody told me online, he said, you know, you do pretty good if you stop re-reporting the sports. I said, what? I said, I'm actually practicing on how we talk about sports. You just have a camera on me. That's right. So re if I'm re-reporting re it, get over it. Yeah. I am re-reporting sports. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> stop. Send your emails to Mario at PacStereo.tv. That is not my I sentiment. I meant it in a joking way. <laughs> Send it to him. I did. It was a joking way. That's all right, way. man. That's all right. All right, you guys. Let me, let me tell you what's up because you already know. We're going to do a couple of things. We're going to talk about the NFL playoff games and what was the best matchup. We're going to say what's the best performance. And then we are going to ask the question, can a steroid distributor tell the truth? <laughs> so you got to understand that sometimes... When you're doing certain things, there's a moment in time where most of us, when we're trying to cheat the industry, can we tell the truth and be, and be believable? We're going to talk about Anthony Bosch on 60 Minutes, where he actually threw uh, A-Rod under the bus many times, but you get to see it officially because it's on a corporate platform. But first of all, let's just talk about which games impressed you the most. And I have four, of course, and we're going to go at them one at a time. And the first one is New Orleans Saints and, of course... Skittles. <laughs> and so, what we're going to do first and say, rate this game. How competitive? How much did you enjoy it? And tell me who your MVP of the game was and the reason why. I can tell you mine, but, you know, it's kind of easy, Mario. So I'll let you start off on this one. You know, it was an exceptional game. I think and what was kind of good about it at another level is that it was so intense. Both teams playing hard, hard, hard on both sides of the ball and that level it was so intense but it, you really got a sense that the better team won just too many things on too many levels same problems that have haunted New Orleans throughout the year when they played the best teams haunted them again True. just not enough in certain areas just not enough and Seattle looking like a finely tuned you know, instrument. So right. it was a it was a wonderful game. Good hard hitting football. A lot of in your face football. Yeah. Even though I kept thinking that um, you know things could be you know called differently, but you, everybody felt that in the games in both the games. And you know, and here's the thing. I think everybody thought this was going to be a big coming out for R Russell Wilson, but it wasn't. Actually, he had an average game. Lynch. I have now been satisfied with when this man gets two or three people around him, he keeps moving the pile forward. I have not seen a running back do that. I mean, when they hit him, you know, those, it's those guys that you say, well, he may not be that strong, but he is. I was so impressed. This was a lynch day. Now, don't take that the wrong way. It was a lynch day. I think he totally commanded the game bar none. Yeah, he was really excellent and in the continue well you know it's amazing the kind of efforts you saw a lot of ongoing efforts on both sides but he epitomized that right. you know he epitomized that and in a way maybe adrian peterson but that's the only other person i can think of maybe sure. but no Vic, he it's amazing and they said that he gets in a little bit he gets into more scuffles too because he does not let up and he's still driving those legs uh, Constantly, Amazing. constantly. Amazing. I'm. I kept watching. I said, "This man, it just he keeps moving forward." Of course, over a period of time, it takes punishment. Now that that's cool. Now that's that's Seattle. Here's the thing that I also looked at. Seattle didn't score as much as I thought, and actually, the second half, they took the crowd out of it a little bit. So there may be a little weakness in that armor with Seattle to a certain extent. And I found out something else that was kind of interesting. You didn't see Russell use his legs that much. So maybe they were maintaining the game. I'm not sure. But if I had to give the overall performance for Seattle, I said, well, I expect, expected them to win. Um, and, and, and not a big surprise, but I think the workhorse totally was Lynch. So it was just like a rushing day for him. So, you know, good performance. Not over the top for me. Let's go to the next one. No, it's, I was, it was also was 
it's what I expected, kind of. Yeah, I, I thought a little bit more on, on on Wilson's end. I just thought he was going to do a little bit more. But there is a game where if there is a rusher that maybe outperformed Lynch, let's talk about the New England Patriots. And now I'm going to say this first. Blunt force trauma. He had a record day performance, four touchdowns, tying an NFL record in 150-plus yards rushing against the Indianapolis Colts, which now has set everybody up to say, they blew them out, like 43 to 22, what have you. Now everybody's on New England's bandwagon. What about you, Mario? You think New England is the force to be reckoned with? Well, I'm, again, I'm not that surprised. I think the thing is that Indianapolis scored 22 points against the Patriots. I think that says something about the team. Right. That's where they are. Still not the top contender. Right. Right. But they're solid in there. In other words, there's they should be in the playoffs. Right. They're just I agree. not. I, did anybody think they were going to win this? No, no I did. I, it's, a, it's a matter of show, right? Right. To me, where they show. Right. So I think the fact that the New England spanked them so bad. Right. It says everything about what we kind of thought about the whole conference. It's going to be the shootout between New England and Denver. And Denver. And that's the one where, hey, you order the pizzas. Right. You roast the chickens. Right. You get everything ready, right? Right. Because that's going to be that, that, that game, just like the one that's coming up right. soon with Seattle. Right. San Francisco. And San Francisco. Francisco. Those two are going to be football players' dream games to me. Yeah, and I'm going to go back with this game and look at it from the perspective that most people had to accept that there were no throwing TDs by Tom Brady. So when they had to look at it, they say, you know, how does it feel to be in a playoff game where everything was rushing? You did a power game. And so I hear a lot of the um, broadcasters and shows talking about New England is on the grind, power, the whole thing. Look out, they're, they're coming. Because now they rush hard. They didn't need the passing game. I say, well, let me stop for a moment and let you know what I'm thinking as it relates to who you're playing against. You played against Andrew Luck, who gave you four turnovers. If you don't score <laughs> those points against off those turnovers, then it will look bad. Now, just take away the turnovers. I looked at it as almost an even game because the turnovers convert to points. And when you have four turnovers, which he has a propensity to do, also his team has a propensity to give up a lot of points. So when they played Kansas City, they gave up 40-something points. So if you're coming in thinking you're doing something big because you all of a sudden can shut down an Indianapolis Colts, I say, well, wait a minute. Didn't they give up 40-something points? So their defense is not that stout in the first place. Mom. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you. In other words, okay, you, okay. The coach has already proven to you guys that he's not stuck in any kind of rut. If there's any coach that changes relative to the situation, it's Belichick. Right. He changes, so please don't, never. And remember, the whole point up until now was that everybody was saying New England wasn't running effectively. And the issue also was the turnovers. They were fumbling. Right. They were shifting the backs a lot. Right. It's interesting how the media people jump on stuff and change, Vic. Right. So, no. Throughout the season, but they have attempted to run, and they right. run when necessary. Right. Same thing with they with the pass; they pass when necessary. Right. And even in this game, a bunch of the scoring opportunities were still set up turnovers by too. passes too. Right, turnovers and passes. Right. So no, it was a wonderful performance, and that's why they are who they are. Right. To me, yeah, I agree. I agree. So I'm with you. I'm not. I didn't find it that surprising. It was, it was what I kind of expected. In terms of, it's a little more, but just but only a little more. It was all you know. It certainly, you know, you knew they could do it. Yeah, and, and I believe in matchups, and matchups bring up everything else. But you know, I was going like I like New England because I think you need New England there because you got to have somebody you want to go against. And look, I'm gonna give you guys props all day long. Eight years at at least the the championship AFC championship or better. I mean, you're talking about a rotation year to year to year that you're in there competing. All the props in the world. I'm not mad at you. No. I love what the consistency is about. But I also know that a lot of people like to be on the bandwagon, similar like when the Lakers are winning. When right. the Lakers are winning, you get a lot more fandom. Right. I'm just saying that the Indianapolis Colts, probably out of all the teams, I had to question their defense. So that brings totally, me, had to totally. bring you had to br had to bring me up to perspective and say matchups are different. But let's see how they work when they come over to Denver. 
And before we go to that little uh, situation, let's go over to the game I said was the championship game of talking shit. <laughs> this, I said San Francisco and Carolina. Did you see the chest bumping, head the, the nodding? The refs, to me, did a jack job. <laughs> they didn't have a chance. To me, they didn't to have a me, chance. They, 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 the fact that they wouldn't call Anquan Bolden for taunting is ridiculous. Right, right. How what examples do you need? When they and I'm sure when they look at it and they all get ready, that was not a well called game. Right. That was just to me a, a bad job on the ref. But I saw some bad calls on both sides. Absolutely. I really did on just on how they were calling things. So but still, in the end, in the end, it went to show who could go who can make you know, score. I, you know who I out of all the quarterbacks, and I'm going to say this, between Russell Wilson, Cam Newton, and Kaepernick. Kaepernick was the only one I thought that says, I'm bringing you what I had last year. Run. <laughs> so when he ran, it brought back the old Kaepernick, the guy that got them there the, in last year into the Super Bowl. He did what I thought Russell and Cam Newton didn't do. That It just was a game where they really was trying to say, let's go against this stout defense. And I'm going to San Francisco proved you have a defense that just continues on in the second half. They get they, they didn't get tired. I like that because I'm saying Carolina was hyped. They had all that adrenaline. They up their chest bumping. They're doing. But when they came in the second half, man, it just seems like they just pushed them down the field. Just kept with Gore doing the running, Kaepernick doing the running, also doing the throwing, and Anquan Bolden. Yes, did he get away with a couple of bounces but Carolina was the ones just doing a lot of it they were initiating it so on one hand they had a lot of confidence it's it just failure to execute to me and it could have turned out differently I mean when you look at it you know Cam Newton's interceptions mm-hmm. too it just it's just failure to to come with your best stuff they did they just didn't do it when the time was there right and even though I think they they were credible in terms of what they brought and the way they did it, I still go down. It comes down maybe to experience two right. at different positions. But no, I think they just San Francisco executed better. Yes, when it came down to came down to it, and they did it mm-hmm. in the beginning too. So there was a consistency there, right? And that and Carolina never managed to get their offense, even though Vic, amazing amount of time. And what got me was the amount of time Cam Newton was getting at times. To throw. He had a lot of time. And still couldn't. And co- st- and in other words, you guys, it was amazing the, the, when he would got he got sacked. Right. The amount of time he was getting to hold on to that ball in the pocket without being able to come across, not deliver it. And to me, mm-hmm. that means you're not doing your progressions because to me, you should be able to go boom, boom. If it's not there, you have to go with the ball. And I believe, you have to go with the ball. And I believe this. This is your Super Bowl. So is it there a time to use your legs? This is a time where you say, if I can't throw the ball into the pocket, and, and San Francisco got some of the best defensive backs, uh, only second to probably Seattle. So if you have time, use your legs, because that's what he's and known he did for. at times. That's not it, enough, it, Not enough. There you go, because he did do some good runs at times. He did a number of them for first downs right. and all that. But, again, just not enough. Right. And, again, I would just say they didn't execute. They no. didn't execute in the phases of the game that were most important. Absolutely. And so far, I give San Francisco a great thumbs up for this victory, because whenever you are on the road, I look at the team that has to go against the odds. So far, the teams we covered played at home. So it's easy to win at home. So San Francisco right now, so far, is getting my number one performance of the four teams that we saw the weekend. But is that enough to make you favor them over Seattle? We're about to get there. We're going to get there once I get to this last one, which is the Denver Broncos. And apologize for the typos there. I did not correct the title on this, so ignore it. It's the Denver Broncos against the, of course, San Diego Chargers, which is... You know, revenge is a dish best served cold. (laughs) So, Chargers got at me. (laughs) I mean, the Chargers made, to me, a representative, more than representative appearance. They did. For a good season. You know, Phillip Rivers had an all-pro season. He really did it from the beginning and through the whole thing. But just not enough. They got something to look forward to. 
The and team I'm not, is young. Yeah, and yeah, they do. And, and even though, to me, okay, Vic, right. my overall feeling, even with, with them and with New Orleans again, I was actually satisfied because I want the most competitive teams to move forward. And both of New Orleans right. and San Diego, I knew was at the end of their chains. I didn't want them to move. I don't want you to move forward so you can get killed. You're just not on that level. I didn't want. I didn't want San Diego to, to have a Cinderella. You didn't upset. want them. No, because it would have meant they were going to go and be get smashed. <laughs> right. In other words, who can go to New England? Because New England will be in their backyard if they win. I I, I want to see the Patriots and versus the Broncos. the Broncos. Right. And I want to see the 49ers versus Seattle. Seattle. And then I will be ready for one hell of a Super Bowl, no matter what you give me. Now here we come to the vote of the most impressive performance out of the four games before we go to our next subject. You actually had those teams. We covered New Orleans. We uh, covered uh, uh, Seattle. We've covered uh, Denver, the Chargers, the Patriots, the Broncos, the Panthers. If you had to have a, a, a moment of saying, this is the player that sticks in my mind that was the MVP of this past weekend, or can, and you got Kaepernick, the quarterback, you don't have to even talk about Brady. He didn't do anything. He got blunt, record-tying, rushing TDs in the playoffs, Lynch. Who, See, I go who? and not making mistakes is always in there for me, too, the quarterback's lead. Right. So uh, that's a harder one for me, Vic. Wow. I'm a, I, that's I, a harder I'm, one for I, me. I have two. That's, and a, I, hard, that's a hard I, one I, for me. You could, I mean, you could go, just go on down – and just that's look at hard, each one. Yeah, and that's a hard one. Yeah, okay, you got Lynch, who did a job. He really carried Seattle. Yeah, but and Russell, but see, I like Russell's consistency and his but, and the fact that he doesn't make mistakes. Maintaining. I'm giving, yeah, I need that, I, right. especially in the playoffs, for you not to make. And to me, I'm always thinking I got a better chance of interception. True. I'm intercepting Kaepernick True. than Wilson, to me. But, to me. but we're voting MVP, which means, yeah. okay, let's MVP, go down the list. I, Lynch. Damn. It ain't Breeze. Let's go on down then. Let's it ain't the Breeze. <laughs> it could be Lynch's in the running, right? Now you got you consider the Blunt, New England Patriots. He had the benefit of not worrying about turnovers. They just give him the ball and he runs. He did wonderful, but, you know, you got to give it to the – see, he had – the blocking was something else. Right. You know, that's hard for me because yeah. I'm looking at their offensive line. Right. And they're clearing people. Uh -huh. So I don't know. If they... Okay, next one up. You got Kaepernick and the Panthers. So you got Kaepernick, the quarterback. Gore did an admirable job. The ball was distributed to a number of receivers, nobody sure. overwhelming. Right now, I think Kaepernick with his legs so far can be considered as well. Yes, he could. And, of course, the Broncos – this was Peyton's day. See, for that's the most what I'm part. saying. You see, except that it was a team I expected them to beat. And, yeah, Vic, I don't know. I'm going Kaepernick because he won on I the can, road. I can agree with and that. And with his legs. I can agree with when that. When you went on the road – I can agree with that. That Trump's blunt because he's in his backyard. Yeah, because he had to do some things on his own. Even though, again, again, wonderful team performances, yes. though. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's hard to me single out individuals. All right, let's go over here. You know, they say the rule is, is you always want saving grace when your, your, your plate is being served with a wonderful dish of tell the truth. <laughs> but when you have never told the truth and not consistently and you would only do it at the time that benefits you, I beg this question about the steroid issue and Anthony Bosch, who actually, formerly of the defunct Biogenesis uh, Company, says he injected A-Rod, which this is not new news. And when we know that once he goes to 60 Minutes, he's already admitting that he did some back, somewhere back in 2010. And then there's this history. So I'm not going to even go over that. What I'm g getting into is I believe everybody's already culpable to responsibility. Major League Baseball, Anthony Bosch, and A-Rod. There is no one who is not guilty. The question is, can you believe a liar who's now telling you I'm telling the truth? Is he believable, Mario? I mean, I just don't, I'm, even though to me, I'm not sure. You're, at first, you were sort of insinuating that someone who is a steroid, who creates steroids, is inherently a liar. I wasn't <laughs> sure I was willing to say that, even though I would tend to say people in big business right. often are liars. How's that? So, <laughs> well, so, well, and sometimes the bigger the business, the more of liars they are for some reason. Right. And the less moral they are, the bigger they are, the higher they're paid in general. True. Okay. And also the fact that corporations are by law 
required to ignore those things and only be profit seeking. True. So yeah, they're gonna. They're, they're all. You know, it's it's all dirty. It's all dirty. It's all dirty. It's just that with a rod. It becomes the idea of having a continual public display of dirty laundry, mostly. True, true. And that's what it is. This is no different than when you're when the women who sue you or the man who sues you comes forward to tell your sexual secret. He's gay or he did this. Right. So, yeah. And he's doing it. Now, the parts we don't see, Vic, mm -hmm. was that the fact that there's always threats of prosecution. Because Always. if you've testified, whether right. depending on who you've testified, so a lot of these things are being done really specifically to stay out of jail, to, to <laughs> stay or position themselves right. Yeah, no, I first of all, I know that whenever you don't want to go in jail, you actually go. Let me tell you the truth as I see it, <laughs> not because you asked me and I didn't tell you the truth years before. So. Is he believable because he's on 60 Minutes? No. So the purpose of him being on 60 Minutes is to do what? Gain some credibility? For I'm, him, probably. Yeah. Can he gain credibility by being on a company format, a big corporation format like 60 Minutes, a show? Will that add credibility to him? It does for some people, I guess. Right. I mean, that's the, I think, the intent. I don't know that it will work, but it's not, it's commonly done. So I assume when things are commonly done, that they must have some degree yeah. of effectiveness, or else they wouldn't be done. I True. mean, they spend a lot of money right. to 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 for public relations for these kinds of things. So okay. I think that it, it it does something. If I had to just without information, you know, all we have is what's been reported. Just if you had to swing a vote. And say, and he says, I injected a rod. Do you believe him when he says that? Yes. I think everybody so far is going, I, yes. I think everybody does. And I think, I think everybody thought that he, they did it before. It's just now you have to hear people come out and say this stuff. Before, everybody thought he was guilty. It's like a lot of them. If you, if you poll everybody, yes, they're guilty. Yes, they're, now we have to suffer through hearing the gory details. Mm. And that's the part that I think is really irritating to the public. True. I really think. I think they already thought he was guilty. I think they think a right. bunch of the other ones are guilty. Why is he so more guilty than all the other you? Because he keeps fighting it. <laughs> See, when you keep fighting it, <laughs> right. studies have shown that when you go, even Mark Twain has a quote like that. He says, just confess. Right. And then it confuses everybody why you can do more dirt. Let me ask you this. Another good <laughs> That's a good answer. Let me ask you this. What is more um, a, a position of lying? When you just simply deny or you go in front of Congress and you lie straight to Congress' face? I mean... No, well, there's, one has a legal thing. Right, I one, understand that. One has a law where it's almost like in court. So when you lie, those things you could actually... Different, different ones of those equi are equivalent to different kinds of testimony. Testimony, right, I understand And therefore that. have implications with lying. Right. Because that's the trick they've been using with people. It's, it's not when they can't. But that's what they did to to Marion, uh, the track star. Uh, yeah. When they Marian can't bust, you, yeah. When they can't bust you, they turn on. They you. they get they get you to lie in court, and then come back and get you for the lie. Right. Perjury. It's part of the whole way they shift to get around the law. So and and, I, and I'm of this. I'm I'm very. To me, it's it's, it's, it's manipulating it's, the law. It is, and I'm also stuck in this. If you tell me Major League Baseball is not guilty at all before the hunt for steroid abuse and distribution, then I'll have a position here. But I haven't been able to be convinced that Major League Baseball didn't turn a blind eye. And oh, they did they turn did, a blind eye. I can't side with them because they're saying they're trying to clean up when they're doing things retroactive. I said, so you're picking the people you want to put a focus on. But that was already part of the issue. And PMC is totally correct in saying that Major League Baseball right. credit. The issue was with the first investigation that they said the use of steroids was so endemic so ingrained that to selectively prosecute, to, to, to pick anyone for prosecution would to be be selective. And that's what they're doing. That, and so they were saying, they, say every, they were like, if you test anyone, they're all positive. Right. And they're doing something they think, that, to me, is slick. On the A-Rod side, they say they reduce the suspension to 162 games, which means he's still suspended for all next year. So all the time that he would have been suspended when he didn't have to this year, all you basically said is, I don't want you to play next year no matter what. No, no, this all, see, this is why, it's, the, part, the other part of why this is bullshit is it really has to do with the money. 
in different situations you get paid. Right. It's just like why don't what happen? Why don't whenever people get busted, when do they resign? <laughs> right. They resign once they get the paper that says, says I, I get, get my, my money. money. Then I resign. Right. If I don't get the paper that says I, I get my money, doesn't matter. there is no resignation. We drag it out. Right. That goes for public officials who are sued for right. for doing all kinds of terrible practices. Right. Till you sign a thing that says I still get my money. Right. Now, once you sign a thing that says I get my millions, then guess what? They fess up and quit. Exit question. Will A-Rod be back in Major League Baseball with the New York Yankees next year? year he says he's going to show up Vic so now it's nasty he's going to show up does that count I don't know he's allowed they said from what I understand by contract he's yeah. allowed to come into the what? dugout <laughs> But will he play? Oh, that's so, you know, you guys. What would you do? If you wanted to, like, mess with everybody, I'd be in there wearing the other team's jersey. I would be straight going, you guys going to have to drag me out. See, this is that, what makes it nasty. All right, man, I'm done with my new oh, sports. Man. Ran long. I know. I don't want to keep going. I'll hit it tomorrow maybe sometime else. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> that's right. Victor Allen's new new sports. A recurring segment. The Morning Coffee with Mario Show. That's right, live Monday through Wednesdays and then part of the rebroadcast. New News Sports is written and directed by Victor Allen. His own fans' perspective of sports. Tune in. Bam. Yeah.